the Department of Building Life Cycle Management, BLM, is engaged with research into and the teaching of the design, development and application of computational methods and tools for the realization of integrated building life cycle management. It deals with methodological and technological innovations in the construction sector that lead to new and altered processes and work procedures in architecture. The institute is located at the Faculty of Architecture at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. The Faculty of Architecture at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology has a long tradition reaching back to the foundation of the University of Karlsruhe in 1825. KIT bundles the missions of both precursory institutions a University of the State of Baden-Württemberg with teaching and research tasks and a large-scale research institution of the Helmholtz Association conducting program-oriented, provident research on behalf of the Federal Republic of Germany. Professor Petra von Boot is the head of the Department of Building Lifecycle Management. In research and teaching, the BLM focuses on the influence of information technologies on cooperative design, construction and operation processes the development and application of integrative planning and cooperation methods and the corresponding data models and IT tools are the key approaches of the department. Based on innovative findings of architecture and civil engineering informatics, the BLM approach combines a holistic systemic planning methodology with virtual engineering technologies and integrated product data modeling. By using a virtual building model, also called BIM or Building Information Model, which provides, besides 3D description of building, also semantic information like material cost or energy related data, the processes throughout the whole life cycle of a system can be supported. Building on the foundation of systems engineering, the teaching of integrative planning methods and problem solving strategies for complex construction issues are major costs. Components. In addition to teaching the basics of construction informatics and computational design, students are also taught integrated model-based planning. The Virtual Engineering Laboratory allows the coupling of virtual modeling, visualization with digital recording, design and production processes. We call it rapid prototyping. The laboratory is led by Dr. Volker Koch. He will provide you an assignment for this week from the lab. Hello again, welcome to our virtual engineering laboratory. And I'm, my name is Volker Koch, I'm head of the laboratory and I will introduce you to the different parts, sections of this lab where we normally working with uh, students and others, other researchers. We have here on the left side uh, our rapid prototyping engines like 3D printers, laser cutter and here on this side the working uh, station and uh, workplaces and here on, on the right side we have a, a 3D stereo visual uh, wall and uh, which is supported by a surround system, acoustic surround system and on the back side we have a lot of very small and effective tools we introduce to the students to work here at the laboratory. Our institute is part of the Faculty of Architecture at KIT and in our laboratory we try to train our students to get in touch with information technologies on one hand and to the reality of their profession in the future um, by introducing technologies which uh, they have to learn when they want to be um, successful in their future lives and in this part of our laboratory we are introducing 3D uh, rapid prototyping technologies like 3D printers and laser cutter and also mill where students can train to get out their objects from the virtual environment to reality discussing about the reality and then bring them back by 3D scan processes back to virtual uh, processes. On this uh, four working station, um, we try to get in, in touch with the virtual world. Uh, for example, here with uh, this device, it's um, an haptical feedback tool where 
you can feel what's inside the virtual world. And um, there is a, a similar to a CAD system, you are able to, to transform and to change geometrical objects and um, get in touch with it by moving this pen here and you get a an, an haptical feedback when you reach the virtuality and so you can get more in touch closer uh, touch to the virtual uh, reality and um, the other workstation here is just a, a 3d scan um, engine um, where you can scan three-dimensional objects these are training objects for our students and um, it is also now, um, of course, we have these uh, Kinect sensors now in, in use because it's much more cheaper and uh, for our uh, environment it's also good enough to, to use Kinect sensors to, to scan 3D objects. And on the other side we have a, a normal modeling station for uh, architectural objects and uh, uh, a stereo projection unit here on the left side. This um, um, haptic force feedback device we have seen, we have used for visual impaired persons to grant them access to the virtual environment. And uh, in this case, it was not successful because uh, to, to put a pen like this, it's very untypical for visual impaired persons to get in touch with objects. They have to use both hands with 10 fingers. And then we try to extend this idea to a um, acoustic surround system and in front of this uh, stereo wall we have installed here a um, surround system where a visual input person can um, through gestures get in touch with virtual objects and the sound systems lead them to the objects and um, after short training the people can hear a virtual object by moving the hands in the reality. And the next step, <coughs> we have um, connect them to the Kinect sensor and um, we are trying now to extend this um, setup by using these devices and uh, also for um, uh, uh, people who are able to see, we are um, extend this setup by using an Oculus Rift um, to, um, to extend this device also for uh, people who can, can see. And the next step, we are also uh, have introduced the brain computer interface here at the laboratory. Um, you can buy this device for I think $400. But um, it's a very a powerful and interesting device where you can measure what's coming out of, from your brain and from your face when you are doing special things. And you can train yourself by being very concentrated and when you think something and you're seeing the same thing uh, in the next minute, you will have a same or um, a similar output here and you can connect this output to a special, a special effect on the computer side. Um, in this setup, we have um, uh, a student have trained the, himself to connect his thoughts with um, uh, a modeling software, and um, um, after a short uh, experience, he was able to to uh, to connect a special thought to um, an act inside the modeling software, like deforming this geometry. Another device we offer here is um, this uh, so-called intelligent headset, which is a, a he normal headset um, with um, GPS sensor, GPS and compass inside, and different kind of sensors. We are we are trying now to 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 get some experience in how can this kind of headset uh, support blind people by. Uh, inside an, uh, um, a foreign town and um, we have now two students here uh, who will um, make um, a setup where uh, connecting this headset to an, an iOS device 
to, su to support uh, the impaired, uh, visual impaired persons. In this project, uh, a student uh, tried to get uh, architecture students more closely to virtual objects. Normally, we, we present architecture by, by plans, by photorealistic projections. And the students here wanted to get more closely to the virtual objects by introducing also a sound system here inside. You, you would sit down here on this chair and you have uh, an Oculus Swift, Oculus Swift um, headset on your head and you get also a surround, a surround, acoustic surround system where the system, the computer will um, give you realistic sound experience for the shown architecture and uh, the special thing about this installation is also that through different devices here you get also a feeling like wind, cold, warm and, um, and also humidity where when you are reaching, when you reach a, a special place inside the architecture you will feel all the, the architecture and hear the architecture. Um, and so you have a very much more closer connection to virtual objects. All our projects here at the laboratory has in common that we are not developing new technical devices, but as architects, we are using them to solve problems for, in this case, uh, visual impaired persons. Um, these devices are normally very cheap and easy to use, and we as architects can get in touch with it and use it, and um, especially with Makey Makey and Arduino boards or Raspberry Pi, we have good experience to make little effective projects together with the students. Makey Makey is a controller uh, which you can connect, connect to your computer and um, connect also with uh, alligator clipping to objects in your environment and then you can interact with the computer. In this case, uh, two students have um, used the Makey Makey to uh, transport the information of a, of a picture uh, again to visual input persons by um, giving sound and information by touching the, the picture itself. As you have seen here at our laboratory, we are working close together with visual impaired persons. And um, this also will be your assignment, your our task from, from our institute, that you have to invent theoretically um, devices or things which will support blind or deaf persons in their daily life. As you can see here in the background, um, these um, paintings here are uh, haptical paintings from a, from a famous German uh, artist, uh, which make possible for blind people to get in touch with visual art. Um, for this project, the students have used our um, rapid prototyping technologies like 3D printer and laser cutter. In this way, you can find on the uh, course site a collection of possible tools, devices. Um, and you have to think about a, a special problems a visual input person or a deaf person uh, is, is faced in, in, in their everyday life. And you have to solve it by theoretical, put together these devices and give a solution to the blind or deaf person.